I now understand why several people have come up to me and said like this one, then I feel like I would have gotten a little bit more depth than that. Hi guys, it's April and it is day one of Get Graphic With It. I am bright eyed and bushy tailed. I haven't yet started reading and I'm probably not going to for a little while because I have my live stream that I am about to start. If, you, uh, if you've been with me for any length of time, you know that every Sunday I do a coloring live stream where I just sit and I talk and I color and it's just a thing that I've been doing for the past two or so years. I don't even know how long I've been doing it at this point, but I have my live stream, so that's gonna be a couple of hours. But, but, the plan is to start with season eight of Buffy. I'm going to do Buffy today. I might switch tracks tomorrow and do both of my mangas and then come back to Buffy. That's just kind of how I, I see my week going. Part of it is because I do wanna do specific videos about some of my reads that I am doing and other bits, it's just because that's, that's the mood I'm in right now. So I am really super excited about getting into Buffy. I, I keep just like flipping through and seeing all of like the familiar characters and they're a little bit more rugged because season seven was not kind. So we will see how all of this plays out. I have heard season eight mentioned quite a lot over the years. I, I will admit I do read Buffy fan fiction, not as much as I used to, but back in the day, when season eight was starting to come out and some of the fanfic writers were starting to sort of reference it, I was very much intrigued, but I had no idea how to get my hands on it. So it's been, I don't know, a very long time. When was this first published? <laughs> Let's date myself. They have to have a copyright page in this, right? 2007. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's like 13 years ago. <laughs> wow, okay. So for 13 years, I've been on and off wanting to read season eight and now I finally can because I finally managed to track all of it down for a decent price without selling an organ. I'm hoping I like it. I have been non-canon with Buffy for a very long time. And then we've got Kirsten White and her Vampire Slayer series that has been coming out. And I have enjoyed the first book of that. I need to go back and read the second book of that, but I have enjoyed that too. But I think it's because it's not looking at the mainstay characters. You know how when you throw yourself into a fandom and you start to make it your own and you veer off canon and you kind of start associating with certain characters and yeah, you got some canonness in there, but but you don't. Yeah, that's sometimes where my headspace lives when it comes to the Buffyverse, but that's okay. I, I can sometimes switch tracks and head back to where I need to go, except for that Buffy reboot. The comic reboot, I. I just can't, I can't. There's just too much nostalgia associated with the original Muffy and what what they're doing with some of the characters in the remake, I just, no. It's for a different generation, not for me. Otherwise, I am going to get ready to start my live stream. It starts in about 15 minutes. I will, of course, show you afterwards where everything's at, but I can give you a quick view of what's going on right now if you're interested. Let's see if I can like turn this thing around. So this is my picture right now. I am back in Thomas Kincaid and Tangled. I think I'm gonna do some more of the flowers and foliage and that kind of thing. It's just kind of where my headspace is. I think I want to get all of that filled out. But yeah, you can look at you. Otherwise, I will see you in a few seconds, but for me, a few hours. Okay, bye. Okay. <laughs> I just have pencils all over the place right now. And here is where I ended the live stream. We've got a whole bunch more of this part done. It might get edited a little bit once I start getting stuff around it colored. I might have to go back and tweak a few things, but overall I am liking how it's looking. This is let me get the, there's the original for comparison. 
the scale is very much off from each other, but that's fine. But it's getting there. I don't know if I'm gonna finish this this year, but I'm just gonna keep on trucking on. I'm like seven pages in right now, <laughs> which I had to stop. I had to stop and talk to you guys because, okay. There's a thing that happens in the season of Angel that has just always drove me nuts. And we got some clarification just within these first seven pages of my feelings on the whole, the whole thing. And we got the fact that Buffy has some doppelgangers just because she is so important. She is the oldest slayer. And the fact that I got that information just makes my heart so happy because uh, some things that I were hoping were true are actually now confirmed as true. And I, I don't know how ambiguous all of that was. And I don't know why I'm trying not to contain spoilers, but the Buffy in Barcelona was not Buffy, which, makes me so happy. That is all I'm going to continue on reading and I will get back to you probably once I finish this or unless something else really, really super exciting happens that I need to let you know about. I do have to say, not a huge fan of how Buffy and Dawn interact with each other right now. One of the things I have loved in the original, I mean, before they did the reboot and resurrected Buffy again was kind of the sisterly bond that started between Dawn and Buffy. And then we had that whole last couple of seasons that just like pulled all of that apart. And of course it, it makes sense to continue it here, but it still makes me really, really sad because I want them to bond as sisters. They're sisters. Though technically Dawn is a part of Buffy, so is Dawn more of like Buffy's child, if you think about it magically. I don't know, random thoughts, throwing those out there. I feel like this vlog is becoming a reaction vlog to Buffy because I just, just finished the first section and we had a reveal of one of the big bads and the cheese kind of gave it away, but of course it's her. Of course it's her. Why wouldn't it be her? Because I mean, she did kind of just like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make this a non-spoilerly, spoil, spoilery, <laughs> can't say that word right now. I'm trying not to give spoils because I think people at this point being only that far in, if you like Buffy, you need to read these. But of course it is. I do have to say, I like how they're taking a lot of the classic storylines from the original Buffy. Cause I mean, this is, this is all canon. This is season eight. I'm liking how some of the past stuff is moving forward into this series right here. And I love the art style. I love how they're depicting Willow and Xander and Buffy and even Dawn. I like how all of this, this is, this is making my heart happy in ways I didn't expect it to make me happy, so happy. I'm not done yet. I'm not, but what? What? The people that they are bringing back in this series and how they're bringing them back, it just, what? Just finished volume one of Buffy season eight. And I do have to say, I do really like it. There were some very good moments where we have the past coming back. And then we also have some very heart-wrenching moments where you're realizing what some of this is actually doing to some of the new Slayers and, and what that means for them. But you also have a look at some of the original characters and where their relationships are at and how all of that is working out now that there are all of the Slayers being triggered. I do have to say there, there, was, a, there was a moment in here where we had one of the past characters come back and there were some things revealed there that I didn't realize would make me as sad as it did. Cause I mean, it was one of those characters that never really, I mean, played some important roles and things, but they weren't like mainstay characters and they weren't necessarily on the side of good, but they made an appearance. They did some very important things in, in this timeline and the final reveal of that character just, it saddened me in a way I didn't, didn't really expect, but on to volume two to see where the rest of this continues. I'm hoping it all continues on the trend of this. I, I enjoyed this more than I actually expected that I would. I'm excited now that I've started this. You can't see it right now, but I've got two dogs with me. 
even though they, they just look like blankets. This is what my life usually looks like. Okay, so I just got done with volume two of Buffy season eight, and this one is more Faith-centered than the last one. So we get to see Faith again, and we get to see the continued play of Buffy and Faith's relationship, how very turbulent that's, all, that's always been, and we get to start to see some of the divide that is happening between the Slayers and Watchers and everybody else involved, because we have Twilight, who is the big gameplay in all of this. And I do vaguely remember that being mentioned in Chosen, the uh, continuation that Kirsten White is currently in the middle of writing. And that's the whole reason I wanted to read season eight to begin with, because that series mentions several things that happens cannily, but only in season eight. And it mentions the twilight and everything that is involved with magic there. So I'm seeing some of that start to play out now. Faith and Buffy's relationship has always been very turbulent and kind of hard to watch. And then we have Giles who plays a big part in this and you get to see some of Giles' past and his, his rebellious ways coming into play too. And then, I mean, the Scooby gang, the trio, they've always had a, a very, dysfunctional relationship, especially everything they put on each other. And, and we're seeing some of that play between Willow and Buffy. And like I said, there, there's a lot of nostalgia in a lot of these characters and then watching them all play for seven seasons and seeing all of this happen and come come around and then seeing it continued here. It's just, you wanna take all of them and make it all right, but at the same time, that doesn't make for a very exciting story if it's just all fluffy and all of that. And then it, we have Don's storyline. Don has Don is a weird character to begin with, especially how they just kind of threw her in there in the middle of everything and how she's now one of the mainstay characters. And having her be like a grown up at this point and dealing with a lot of the same pitfalls of youth and everything else that the Scooby gang has dealt with and she's now coming into that as well. It's just like, it's nice, but it's dark which I think is why I've always really liked Buffy. We play with a lot of comedy, we play with a lot of lightness, we play with friendship, but it has this darkness to it that everyone can kind of relate to in their own individual ways. And therein lies the appeal of Buffy. Okay, so I just finished volume three and I'm just dropping off all of these to pick up additional volumes, but I'm not all that thrilled with volume three, I mean, it wasn't horrible. Definitely not my favorite. Not a huge fan of some of the places it went or some of the things that happened and uh, some of the repeats that, <laughs> thank you, dog. And some of the repeated things that keep on happening to Buffy and Xander and Willow. It's like we're stuck in the same track and we don't really have something new to introduce into their lives. It was cool to see a little bit more of Dracula and see Tokyo and how all of that was incorporated. But I just, it was, it was a, <laughs> this volume I more of just wanted to get through and done and over with. And I know these guys are living really hard lives and so sometimes they don't make decisions that I'm particularly a fan of, especially how they handle themselves emotionally. And I understand that they're flawed characters and all of that. I just, sometimes I feel like I have these characters built up in a specific way in my head and I have specific traits and ideals that are these characters' personalities. And sometimes, especially in as things further progress, they don't act in ways that I think they should have acted in. Granted, they're not my characters and I've only been like, building them up in incorrect ways in my brain because I don't have a life. But I just, it's hard to let go of some of those ideals and let things flow sometimes. And so some of the things that happen in this book and some of the choices that they make, just it, they don't feel authentically Buffy or authentically Xander or some of like the weirdness that 
got introduced just to kind of have fun with some of the older characters feels really bizarre and I don't know if I like it but then again they're not my characters so I don't really have full control over them. <laughs> it's just one of those things that when you've lived in this universe for 20 some odd years or whatever, it's hard to let some things go. And when new things are introduced after you thought everything's ended, like how many years ago I've been, you know, kind of building things up, memories up in my head that may not be totally accurate to canon and the characters. It's just, you get into this weird gray space. So yeah, um, I'm not entirely sure how much more I'm going to read today. If I'm gonna read more today and just kind of leave that volume there and maybe have better luck tomorrow. If I do read more, I will definitely let you know. Otherwise, I am going to end it here for tonight and probably see you tomorrow morning. Okay, so we are on day two of Get Graphic With It. I didn't read any more yesterday. I kind of just decided to call it quits there. But the plan is to read both of my manga, maybe pick up one volume of Buffy. I think about three a day is probably going to help me keep my sanity rather than like inhaling too much at once. Um, don't know exactly how today is gonna go because I'll be bare over here, it hasn't been feeling very well. So I'm going to take him in for a emergency trip to the vet. So hopefully all of that turns out okay. But otherwise, if I do get these read in any kind of order, I will definitely let you know. I just, it feels like Monday and I'm not super excited about it. I'm in one of those moods. We'll see where today goes. I just finished Girl from the Other Side. I also recorded a review of this volume of Girl from the Other Side that I'm hoping to get edited and uploaded tomorrow, but I thought I would stop now and be like, this is for Get Graphic With It. I need to talk about it in this vlog. This volume, this ninth volume, I, I now understand why several people have come up to me and said like, this one made me cry. This one made me tear up because that ending, that ending, oh my gosh, this, these books, every single time, there's something in these reads that just breaks me a little bit. And there's also something that just lifts me up a little bit. That is why I love this series. I, <laughs> there are some weird things with Negeb that you have to keep your eye on that could potentially be a little to no, but this series so far, I have just loved so much. It is so darkly written, but there's this air of innocence about Shiva that just pulls it, pulls it along and it just has this very fairy tale like quality that just is so magical. But now that I have finished this, at some point I am going to pick up this one, get my pink color done. This is going to be a little bit more uplifting than that one, which is good. I might save this for later, mainly because I I don't know how Albus's vet visit is going to go, and right now that is just is taking a lot of my headspace. So, and it's probably I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping it's nothing. I'm hoping I'm just building things up in my head. But that is my back up feel good when I may or may not get news that I don't want to hear. Such happy notes for me today. I hate Mondays. <laughs> I really do. I do have to say, out of all of this, I am very, very grateful to be able to work from this office studio. It just, it fulfills me in a way that I've been missing for a little while. So there's a happy for today, looking on the bright side. Plus I get to stare at these books all day, so. That's awesome. We got back from the vet. Poor baby boy has to take some allergy meds and he's got an ear infection, but luckily there's some things that we can, you know, attempt to start treating and nothing more severe like my brain was trying to make it. I did finish Sue and Tai Chan volume two and it was so cute. I just love the way the two of them interact and how Sue is trying to teach Tai how to be a 
grown up cat and how Ty is just starting to mimic Sue. There are some things that definitely as a cat owner I can can relate to and I think that's why I really really love this so much and plus it's like full color illustrations and so they're absolutely adorable. I love them so much. It's so cute. I what am I gonna do now? I don't know. Deciding on if I want to continue on in Buffy or not right now. I mean I definitely will but right now I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. If I do I will definitely be back. We are on day three of Get Graphic With It. I <laughs> did not update you after some of my reads yesterday. Yesterday was a weird day. It got away from me a little bit. So I did end up reading two different volumes of Buffy. Volume, what is it, four and five? Yes, four and five. There is something I'm noticing with these. They're all interconnected, yes, but I kind of half expected that each volume would be like its own episode, kind of relating it back to the TV show. But that's not necessarily the case. A lot of times it's the the chapters, the sections, the parts within the stories that are their own little mini episodes, which ends up making it feel like it goes by very, very quickly. And the fact that it makes it feel like it's all over the place because you start out say over here with Harmony and what's going on with Harmony. And then all of a sudden you're over here dealing with something going on with Dawn or you're over here dealing with a group of slayers in say Tokyo or in Korea or somewhere like that. And yeah, you kind of know the end goal of all of it. I think each of those could have been their own like a hundred and some pages because then I feel like I would have gotten a little bit more depth than that especially when we're introducing all these new slayers and how the fact that all of these guys got triggered simultaneously. So now there's a whole bunch of slayers out in the world. It's not just about Buffy and their gang and there's factions starting in all of this. And you can kind of feel that tension, but not really because you're mainly focusing on the original Scooby gang, which like I said, makes sense because that's what brought everybody to these comics in the first place. But we keep trying to pull in new characters, but we only give them like three seconds of screen time. And then sometimes we just like kill them off and we're supposed to feel something for them, but we've only seen them for like five pages or so or something like that. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's what it feels like. There was something else I was gonna say. One thing I do really, really, really like about the original Buffy is the fact that there's there's this interplay between the Scoobies or Buffy and anybody really. There's this whoopiness that always seems to happen. And there's a little bit in here, but not a whole lot. <laughs> and I want more of it. This is a lot darker. It goes more towards the dark end, as you can tell by clearly Black Willow going on there. And it, it plays with a lot of those darker tones, which yeah, the Buffy, TV show ended up doing towards the end of its airtime. Started out this like light bubbly with darker undertones at the beginning of the Buffy franchise. And then it kind of turned into this very angsty thing. And I like the middle ground when we were touching maybe season four, season five. And so I was kind of looking for that here and it's, it's not exactly there. But that being said, Today, my goal is the last three volumes of Buffy. Get season eight done. I'm kind of most excited about this one right here because we have, yeah, that, 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 yeah, mm, Spike. Um, I have been waiting for him to appear and I am already five, five, volumes in and he hasn't showed up yet. I mean, he showed up in some fantasy stuff, but hasn't showed up yet. So this is my end goal. I do have some things pulled if I do end up reading all this because this is technically going to be the end of the readathon for me, but I do have some other comics that I need to get read that are sitting on my shelf that I will probably pull for the next couple of days. I have at least two graphic novels and three comics that I can read. And I think then I'll have most of my, if not all of my graphic stuff read, which is a very weird concept. But that being said, we'll see if I actually get through all three of these today. Who knows? Okay, quick update for you guys. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands, but I finished the next two volumes of Buffy, which is what, volume six and volume seven. 
math, simple math, April, if you read, never mind, doesn't matter. So I read volume six and volume seven, and I mean, I kind of get why the storyline is going the direction it's going. These are comic books. It makes sense to do some superhero type things with it. And it also makes sense to bring back a lot of familiar characters because these are OG Buffy fans who are most likely going to be picking these up. So it makes sense to bring back some of this nostalgia there. That is the whole reason I am reading it, even though it isn't until the end of volume seven where I finally get to see my spike. But I can't say I am too terribly thrilled with it, though particularly this episode, volume, see, I'm getting them interchanged. We finally get Angel back in this one, and there's some reveals around Twilight and the whole thing, which I just think is ultimately extremely dumb. There is a lot of fast-paced stuff that happens in these, and... One thing I do have to note is when we have all of these characters coming back, there's always this like grand reveal moment where we have like a panel or a spread or whatever of those characters where we see their face for the first time. And a lot of times I think it's for that shock value of that big grand reveal of, oh my gosh, it's Oz. Oh my gosh, it's Xander. Oh my gosh, it's Riley. Oh my gosh, it's Warren kind of deal. Or heaven forbid, it's Amy. But... The problem is, while the art style is very good in these, and I absolutely love the artistic little uh, uh, sheets that are in between a lot of these, which is my favorite part of comics in the first place, a lot of times the art style doesn't clearly help you figure out who the character is. Because there has been several moments now where those grand old gas moments have happened, but it took me several more pages to confirm who I thought maybe it was because finally we got someone saying their name. So characters like Riley and the characters like Oz and the characters like uh, Harmony and things like that, it took a little bit of context clues to figure out who they actually were because their faces didn't look like their faces. Not that I've stared at their faces for, yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> So, the, I mean, there are, you know, specific characters that are easy to spot. Sometimes I lose Buffy in the comic. I, I won't lie about that because there are several blondes and other things going on. Sometimes I'm like, wait, is this Buffy? Dawn doesn't, doesn't necessarily look like Dawn. I, Xander is the easiest to pick out and that's mainly because of his eye patch. He has gotten extremely buff. Giles, I can always pick out Giles. He's he's the other character that I absolutely love in the series. Spike is easy because of his hair. Angel was kind of like, yeah, he doesn't really look, he looks like Angel mainly because of how blocky he is. Willow sort of looks like Willow. Tara, Tara I did get right away, but part of that was context and part of that is just because of Tara's always been ethereal. Uh, Willow, she has Willow moments, but there are also other moments where I'm like, eh, Kennedy, not Kennedy I struggle with. Uh, Faith, she's hit or miss. I mean, most of the time I can tell who she is by where she's standing and who she's with. I don't know why I just went into this like big old dialogue about how if, how if and when I can <laughs> recognize characters in the comic, but that is just something I kind of wanted to, and every once in a while just pulls me out of the story a little bit. But I'm going to end this update here. I literally only have one more, one more of these to read, at least for season eight. I want to pick up season nine because it does look like there's a little bit more spike in that one than there has been in this one. This one is definitely going to have my spike in it. So I'm a little bit more excited about this one, but at the same time, it is the conclusion of season eight. So I know things are gonna move extremely fast. It's gonna be extremely weird thinking about season nine. I don't know how I'm gonna get my hands on season nine and I don't think there are as many in season nine, but still thinking about getting my hands on season nine. So technically it is Wednesday. It is day four of Get Graphic With It, but I think I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here and then just get out one through three to you guys. Now, I thought I was going to read the last volume of Buffy yesterday, but Things just kind of got away from me and I never ended up really picking this up, 
which I guess is good because I can take my time with this, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but since this is the last book on my TBR, I am hoping to then go into Ghost. I decided to pick this one up um, mainly because I have now done mangas, I've now done comics and this would be a graphic novel and I think it would just round out everything nicely. Technically I have maybe three comics and then a, another graphic novel on my bookshelf that I can pick up if I do continue to keep on reading things and that might happen but today it, this is this is what my goal is going to be. I know I'm not going to be covering that in this vlog. I just thought I'd let you know what you can look forward to which means I'm ending this here. Of course, comment down below on how many uh, things you think I'm gonna end up reading for this whole readathon. Just wondering what your ideas are. And of course, tell me how you guys are doing as well. I would love to hear that. And I will see you soon. I heard your beautiful faces.